beta fans basically are revealing themselves with these conclusions they're coming with because I made a video about this early in the year and now it's starting to come out. So when Jerron Ennis signed with Matchroom in the zone, everybody said, well, he can't get any fights at PPC. That's a good deal for him. Uh, he can't get the fights that he's asking for. A lot of people don't want to fight him at PPC and everything else. Now, we openly had heard guys like Pitbull say about Shakur Stevenson that he didn't want to fight him. He runs around everything else. He didn't say that Shakur Stevenson was ducking him. And Shakur Stevenson and Pitbull was a mandatory. But for some reason, people want to come up with these conclusions that, oh, man, Shakur Stevenson signed with Matchroom because he don't want to fight with Tank. I mean, nobody said that when Jerron in the sign with Matchroom that he was ducking any fights. Nobody said that it would be hard to make a fight because Jerron Ennis is at Matchroom. I, I don't understand that. And Devin Haney was somebody who was with Matchroom, not uh, when well, he was dealing with Matchroom in the zone a while ago, like years ago, before people was even believing that they can even uh, put fighters on the platform and have big fights. The only person they really believed in that was on the zone was Canelo. And Devin Haney was early on the zone. He was one of the first uh, young American fighters on uh, the zone. And a lot of people don't realize that, but he's been doing most of his fights on the zone, except for a couple of top-ranked fights. And uh, Showbox back in the day. But um, it's funny how the fans sit up here and say, well, Shakur Stevenson, his deal with Matchroom is kind of not good, man. He, he got to prove himself and everything else. So he getting the same type of deals that Jerron Ennis and everybody else. And Devin Haney and, and Anthony Joshua, who people said was one of the faces of boxing, and all the guys that Eddie Hearn has. Now, all of a sudden, Shakur Stevenson comes along, and it's a negative. Man, it's, it's openly biased, man. It's openly it's openly biased, man. That's why when people say stuff about, when people didn't say much about the Jerron in his deal, but they gave these other fighters who signed the zone a lot of um flack, that's when I looked at it like, wow, we're really throwing guys under the bus who we don't like because of, Certain other reasons. It has nothing to do with the uh, matchroom deal. When people are coming around here talking about don't sign with matchroom and matchroom this and matchroom that, Jerron Ennis didn't get that kind of backlash when he signed with matchroom. None of these guys have. Canelo, Triple G, they went to uh, matchroom when they only had a couple of fighters in the zone. They went to the zone when they had only a couple of fighters over there. There wasn't a lot of guys that they was fighting with. And they left Gold, uh, he, uh, Canelo left Golden Boy. So it's not a lot of guys that was actually at Matchroom to even match with at that point. Even right now, with uh, Jerron Ennis over there, there's not a lot of people to match up with right now. But you don't hear a lot of fans saying, well, man, he shouldn't have signed with them. You don't hear nobody saying that. They putting the onus on a lot of other guys. Like, oh, well, they, they ducking Jerron Ennis still. Nobody's really caring about if he's with Matchroom or not. So I don't understand why the matchroom thing is still a problem with some fans with guys signing there. It's like people are really invested in what Shakira Stevenson is doing. Like they treating bro like he's a like he's a face of boxer. Like his business moves should not matter to anybody. If you don't think he's been trying to fight anybody up until this point. Why would him signing with Matchroom change your thought about anything? You should have the same type of uh, beliefs that you had before. But yeah, man, that's what I knew. I made a whole video about it. That's why I went in that day. People go, I'm see everything coming out now. Everything coming out now. It's starting to reveal itself. It really is. They giving this dude flack. I ain't I ain't see nobody jump on the internet and said. Because Jerron in the side with Matchroom, he ducking somebody. Because it's not true. It's just a deal. I mean, how you going to turn out a better deal from someone else that you're really interested in? If somebody shows interest in you and they feel like you're uh, a big part of the future and they want to build around you and they value your talent, why not go in that direction? And money talks. That's all it is to it.
If they talking about more money, then that's how it's going to go. But Eddie Hearn knows now, okay, I need to invest in this guy, this guy, that guy. It's a reason why he's trying to get Jerron Ennis and uh, Shakur Stevens. Well, he has them now. It's a reason why. And he got Canelo. He just seen Canelo numbers. He just seen, he just seen Shakur Stevenson numbers. He just seen Jerron Ennis numbers. And guess what? He still went over there and signed them. Even with Devin Haney numbers, people say, oh, Devin Haney ain't selling. Well, Eddie Hearn sure do be running around trying to make pay-per-view no fights with uh, Devin Haney. He sure does. Even after the top-ranked fights, when people said the Loma and Devin Haney fight was low, Eddie Hearn still ran over there and made that uh, Regis Program Devin Haney fight. Then turns around and makes the um, Ryan Garcia and Haney fight. So it sounds like the pay-per-view numbers are real over there at Matchroom. They're very real. Because why is he still putting pay-per-view numbers together if he's getting all this money by Turkey out of sheet? His fighters making $100 million, $50 million for one fight. Well, why would he need to worry about these little pay-per-view numbers with these other guys? Oh, because they're doing real numbers. That's why. He see the real numbers. He really is. But, yeah, man, they don't want to, people don't want to keep in Boston. People are like, man, we want to talk about Boston. I do, too. But every time I turn around, every time I'm trying to match up a fight with an American fighter, pay-per-view numbers start popping up, which is a duck. It's, that means somebody ducking, man. Every time you hear about somebody talking about pay-per-view numbers, that means it's ducking. When Floyd fought Canelo, he wasn't saying, hey, man, I need to see how many pay-per-view numbers he do before I fight him. Pay-per-view numbers are a ducking tactic these days. It is what it is. I'm just being real. If you want to hear about any kind of ducking, if somebody brings up pay-per-view numbers, when Wilder and Fury was going to fight, you didn't hear anybody bringing up pay-per-view numbers. So it's just a ducking tactic. And I don't like to use that word, but I'm just being real. Nobody else said this in history up until this point with Canelo and all these other guys coming along now. Not even Floyd said that. Well, I need to see how much Madonna said. Oh, I need to see how much Robert Guerrero sell. Or Cotto. I need to see their numbers first and determine who I'm going to pick. You see how dumb that sounds? But yeah, with Jerron, he's got that same deal and nobody says anything. That's all I got. Like and subscribe.